What's up, YouTube? I woke up today and I decided that today is going to be a QuickTime Player Appreciation Day. We all know QuickTime, we use it pretty regularly, but what most people don't know is that it's a lot more than just a video player. So let's look at some of these cool little hidden features. Starting with a basic one, you can use it to easily rotate videos. Go to Edit and rotate left or right, or use the keyboard shortcut. You can also flip your videos horizontally or vertically, which can be useful if you're working with a mirrored video. Some webcams, for example, like to mirror videos, so this is an easy way to flip your video back to normal. Generally speaking, QuickTime does a lot of things that you'd find in a fully capable video editing software. I wouldn't recommend QuickTime for video editing, but if you're adjusting a single clip or need to merge a couple of clips together, it's usually easier to do that in QuickTime rather than trying to learn a video editing program you're not familiar with. All right, moving on to the next trick. While having a video open in QuickTime, you can just drag and drop other videos on your video player, and it will merge those videos together. To save this new video that combines multiple videos together, just click the Red X button, and you'll be asked if you want to keep this new document. Give it a name, pick a destination folder, and it will be saved as a new, separate file, leaving your original videos untouched. Saving the new version can take a while, depending on your computer's horsepower and the length and resolution of the videos you're working with. Once it's done, you'll see a separate file like this. Sometimes, instead of adding more videos, you'll want to make your videos shorter. Go to Edit and Trim, and you can trim down your video clip. I'm working with a really short clip here, so my trimming example ends up being ridiculously short, but oh well. Same thing here, when you're closing out the file, you'll be asked if you'd like to save this trimmed version as a new copy. Video files are a little different compared to text files, for example, because you usually can't simply modify and overwrite the original file. Any changes you make require creating a new copy of the video. But this is usually a good thing, because it leaves the original copy in place in case you want to return to it later. All right, next one, you can convert videos. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of formats to choose from, but you can use this, for example, to downscale a 4K video to a smaller resolution or you can convert from H.264 to HEVC. Again, converting speed depends on your horsepower and how heavy the file is. I guess a more common situation would be to convert an HEVC file to H.264 for better compatibility. So you would basically do what I just did, but save to H.264 instead. If you want more freedom as far as video formats go, I recommend looking into Apple's compressor, or check out a free video converter called Handbrake. This next one is pretty cool. You can use QuickTime to pull very precise, high-quality screen grabs from your video that will match the dimensions of your video perfectly. First, you'll find the frame you want to save, and then go to Edit and Copy. After that, you can open Preview and go to File and choose New from Clipboard. Boom! There's a high-quality screenshot matching your video's full resolution. After that, you can save the screenshot to your preferred location in whatever format you like. Most people will take screenshots with the traditional screenshot tool, and while that works fine, your screenshot's resolution will never match exactly the dimensions of your video, and you'll likely end up cropping a sliver of your video out of the screenshot. This next one is fun, and it's something I sometimes do as a video editor when I'm quality checking different versions. You can open two or more videos in QuickTime, and if you hit Command and the Return key, your videos will play simultaneously, nicely synced. To make it even better, you can make your videos loop. Go to View and Loop. This is something you need to do separately for each video, which is kind of annoying, but I love the looping feature. It's not a 100% seamless loop, and you might notice a slight pause when the video loops, but this is a helpful tool for those who are making looping videos for social media. Or if you're like me and want to get mesmerized by a spinning iPhone. I mean, look at that. That's screensaver material right there. Maybe with a slow, dreamy spin, it would be even better. Something to think about. This next feature I never use, but it could be useful for some people. Open a video, click this little picture in picture button here, and your video gets minimized to a corner of your screen. The nice thing about this is that it's a floating window, so you can keep working on other stuff and do whatever, and the video screen will always stay on top. I could see this being really useful on a smaller screen with limited space. You can also change the playback speed. Go to View Playback Speed, and you can either slow down or speed up your video. Slowed down footage might look a little choppy if your frame rate isn't high enough, but it's still nice to have the option to adjust the playback speed. I often speed up videos and podcasts if I'm watching something really long, 
so it's nice to have that same option in QuickTime as well. And speaking of frame rate, if you hit Command plus I on your keyboard, you can inspect a lot of key information about your video. This will show you the resolution, frame rate, video codec, bitrate, color space, and other technical info about your video. It doesn't show all the metadata because that could get overwhelming for most people, but it shows the most important things. Let's talk about the recording options next. Besides being just a video player, QuickTime can also capture a lot of different things. You can use it as an audio recorder, or you can use it for screen recordings, which is what I'm doing right now. The movie recording option allows you to record video from an external source. This can be either your webcam or really any type of camera that's connected to your computer. GoPro, DSLR, whatever. I have my Apple TV listed here, so if I click that, I can actually view and record the screen of my Apple TV on my Mac. Boom! There's my Apple TV inside my QuickTime player. This is a game changer when recording tutorials for Apple TV. Next up, extracting audio from a video file. Just open up any video that has audio in it. Go to File, Export As, and Audio Only. Quick export, and there's your audio file. Doesn't get much easier than that. This feature is often overlooked, but QuickTime also has the same quick sharing options you'll find in most apps on your Mac. You can airdrop, email, or text a video to someone straight from QuickTime. I'm more of a drag and drop the file into your message type of guy myself, but I know some people prefer to do it this way. Let's say you have a longer video and you want to cut out a part in the middle, or you want to rearrange parts of the video. Go to the part where you want to split your video and go to Edit and Split Clip. You can do this as many times as you want, and you can then rearrange parts of your video, or you can delete the parts you don't want. Unlike the trimming tool, which allows you to trim a portion from the beginning or end, this allows you to remove sections in the middle of your video. I have this long drone shot here, and I split it into four different chunks. I can now move these around, or I can delete a couple of these split sections and just leave the ones I like. Similar to what we did before, this will become a modified video, which will be saved a separate version after we're done. Click the red button, or you can go to File and Save. Give it a name, and it'll get saved as a separate copy. Easy peasy. One last thing I wanted to talk about is subtitles. QuickTime technically has a subtitle support, but I've noticed it's extremely picky about the subtitle format, and overall getting QuickTime to show subtitles is a pain in the butt. If you need subtitles, you're better off using something like VLC Media Player, which is completely free and available on both Windows and Mac. Just place your subtitle file in the same folder next to your video, and VLC will automatically display the subtitles. I wish QuickTime would make it easy like this, but during my 20 plus years of using Macs, QuickTime has never been good at subtitles. Anyways, I hope you learned something new today. It is QuickTime Appreciation Day after all. Slap the like button below to show QuickTime your appreciation, and I hope to see you all in the next appreciation video. Thanks all. Until next time.